Hey everyone and welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? Always ready. What fascinating thing are we uncovering today? Well, today it's less about uncovering a hidden truth and more about looking deeper at a story many of us think we know. The story of Jennifer Grey, the star of Dirty Dancing. Ah, oh, Dirty Dancing. I have to admit, I'm a sucker for that movie. Who isn't? But we're going beyond the catchy tunes and dance moves today. We've got this really interesting Spanish language article about Gray's appearance at the recent London Film Festival. And honestly, it kind of blew my mind a little. Oh, color me intrigued. Spill the tea. What's this article about? What makes it so mind blowing? Well, it focuses on this almost like, I don't know, like a reclaiming of her space in Hollywood. Yeah. And it uses this very specific event to do it. Her red carpet appearance at the premiere of her new movie, A Real Pain. Apparently, she totally owned it. Burgundy v-neck sweater, dark sequin skirt, black heels, a far cry from baby, right? Wow, yeah. A definite style evolution. I mean, it's been about like 35 years since Dirty Dancing. But it sounds like more than just a fashion glow-up is happening here, right? Exactly. And the article seems to agree because it uses the word comeback. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a big moment for her professionally. It got me thinking... Why now? Is this really a comeback or have we just not been paying attention? Right, right. And it's extra interesting when you remember Gray's career is so closely tied to Dirty Dancing. The article actually talks about this, how the film changed her life overnight. But like, was it really overnight? That's what I was thinking. I mean, sure, the fame might have been immediate, but what about everything else that comes with that kind of success, especially at such a young age? The article kind of hints at some negative impacts as well. Yeah. Definitely. You can't talk about being a young actress, especially back in the 80s, without talking about the pressure to look a certain way. And Hollywood was a whole different beast back then, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. And that leads us to probably the most talked about thing when you say Jennifer Grey. Right. The rhinoplasty, the article actually touches on it, on how Grey herself has talked about feeling like that decision really affected not just her career, but her whole sense of self. It's incredibly brave of her to be so open about it, especially in her memoir, Out of the Corner. It is. And it's heartbreaking. Can you imagine feeling like you had to change a part of yourself, something so central to your face, just to be successful? It really makes you think about how pervasive those pressures must have been, especially back then. And for Grey, who literally became famous with a certain look, I mean, can you imagine being in her shoes? Like, it wasn't just societal pressure. It was potentially tied to her livelihood, to her career. Yeah, absolutely. And it's crazy because the article even says she felt like the surgeries negatively affected her career, which, I mean, yeah. how does that even compute? Like, you get a nose job to fit in better, to be more successful, and then it backfires. Yeah, you'd think it would be the opposite, right? But if you think about it, back then, typecasting was huge, and Gray's look in Dirty Dancing was a part of what made her so relatable, so baby. Right. So by changing her appearance, even though it was because of the pressure she was facing from that very same appearance, she accidentally might have ruined the image that brought her success in the first place. Like, talk about Attach-22. Totally. And this was way before stars could control their narrative with social media and be like, this is the real me, take it or leave it. Hmm. Back then, the media really did define you. And if they couldn't place you anymore, if that immediate recognition was gone... You became invisible. Basically. And that's the exact word Gray uses in the article. Like, she went to a party after her second rhinoplasty, and Michael Douglas, someone she'd worked with, someone who knew her, didn't recognize her. Oh, my gosh. See, that's what I mean. This article, it just, it stays with you. Not even Michael Douglas recognizing her. That's heavy. It really highlights how, especially back then, your perceived beauty could determine your whole career. Yeah, and it wasn't just about getting roles. It was about how people treated you, how seriously you were taken as a person. It's a lot to unpack. But it's something we should talk about, especially since Grey's story. Even all these years later, it still resonates with so many people. And here's where it gets even more, I don't know, thought-provoking, I guess. This wasn't just one rhinoplasty. She had two. Like, she went back for a second one. I know, right? That's what got me, too. It's like, if she was already feeling the negative effects, why go through it again? You know? It's like, I don't know, some people have this, like, a complicated relationship with their appearance, especially in an image-obsessed industry like Hollywood. It makes you wonder, like, did she think the first surgery just didn't quite get it right? Or maybe the pressure, like, intensified after Dirty Dancing? And it makes me think this was the 80s, right? Like. Mm. Plastic surgery wasn't what it is today. Oh, totally. Back then, it was a lot riskier. Exactly. The results, like we're seeing with Gray's story, were kind of a gamble. 
Yeah. So you add that into the mix, the pressure, the risks, the regret she talks about in the article. Oof. It's a lot. Yeah, there's a quote in the article that's really stuck with me. It's bleak, honestly. She says, I lost my identity in my career. It's like, wow, it's that price she feels she paid, you know? To tr fit this mold that maybe she didn't even want to fit into in the first place. And, and it makes you think, has anything really changed? Like, women in Hollywood still deal with these impossible expectations all the time. But what I find kind of inspiring about Gray's story is that she's back. And it feels different this time, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And the article actually talks about this. Like, it points out how at peace she seems with her appearance now. She even says, like, flat out, I want to be who I am now. I love that. Me too. It's like she's finally free from those expectations. And the best part, it seems like Hollywood's finally on board too. Like, she's being appreciated for her, for her talent and all she brings to the table. Yes. But here's the thing. Reading this article, it's like... We're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Oh, for it's, sure. It's just a snapshot. Like it focuses on the rhinoplasty, the pressure. But what about everything else? Like how did she cope with feeling invisible in an industry that's all about being seen? What was that like for her emotionally? You just know there's a whole story there. All those years, all those experiences that shaped who she is now. I know. And I'm dying to know more. The article mentioned her memoir, Out of the Corner. I think I might need to add that to my reading list. Like, AKP, have you read it? Not yet, but I've heard it's really insightful, especially her take on how Hollywood has or really hasn't changed since Dirty Dancing. Right. Like, is it really any different now? Do you think the pressure is still there? I mean, look at social media. Everyone's trying to be perfect all the time. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Like, we started talking about Jennifer Grey, and now it's like, whoa, it's about all of us. No, totally. And that's what I love about these deep dives. You never know where we're going to end up. But this one, it really got me thinking about, like, self-acceptance and what it means to be successful on your own terms. Yes. And the thing is, Jennifer Gray's story, it's still being written. Mm -hmm. you know, she's back, she's working, and it feels like she's finally in control, which is amazing to see. But it also makes you wonder. Wonder what? Like, what if she'd never felt the need to change a thing? What if she'd never gotten that nose job? Where would her career be now? Oh, that's such an interesting question. Would she have had a completely different path? Would she have been in more movies, played different kinds of roles? Who knows? Right. And it makes you think, how many other talented people, men and women, haven't gotten their shot because they didn't fit the mold? Yeah. And I don't know, maybe it's not even a conscious thing, you know? Like maybe it's this subtle pressure we all feel to be a well, certain um, way. Yeah, 100%. It's like this unspoken thing, right? But I think the more we talk about it, the more we shine a light on it, the better it gets. Totally. So any final thoughts on Jennifer Grey? On rhinoplasties? On the wild ride that is Hollywood? You know, what I really take away from all of this is just how powerful it is to own your story. It might not be easy getting there. Gray's journey definitely wasn't. But there's something really inspiring about someone who can look back on everything and say, this is me, take it or leave it. Perfectly said. Owning your story, that's something we can all strive for. All right, everyone, that wraps up another deep dive. We covered a lot of ground, went from Spain to Hollywood and back again, all thanks to Jennifer Grey. What a ride. I love it when that happens. Me too. As always, we hope this sparks some thoughts, maybe even some conversations. And hey, if you want to go even deeper, check out Jennifer Grey's memoir, Out of the Corner. We hear it's pretty amazing. Definitely worth a read. All right, until next time, keep those questions coming and keep diving deep.